Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to Escambia Citizens Watch Live. I'm John Singley, your host today. We're beginning a new series, the Unpacking the 2019 Florida State Legislature. And we're going to do it in three areas before the week's over. It'll be in the environment, it'll be education issues, and we have a special guest for the League of Women Voters Pensacola Bay area is going to be in later this week to talk about high priority legislative issues from their point of view. But today we're, we're going to begin with the environment and uh, what better person, a friend of ours here at ECW Live to help us understand this, Christian Wagley. He's an organizer for uh, Healthy Golf. Many of you know him here in town. He was a member of the mayor's transition team, the environment pillar. Christian, welcome back. Thanks for the opportunity, John. I always enjoy our visits. And uh, we, we always enjoy having you in here, very attuned to the environmental issues. Christian, uh, you're going to recap the legislature's actions or inactions on the environment today. What are your big takeaways? Well, my, my quick, short and dirty recap is to say it was very disappointing. Um, we, we do follow the legislature very closely, uh, I do, um, really focused on water quality issues, but really all environmental issues. And this was a year we really thought we were going to see some very, very big things happening to deal with water quality and, and a number of environmental issues. And the reason is that um, this, this past year, really tw uh, 2018, all the way back into 2017, we had this huge, huge epic crisis of, of red tide and blue-green algae and this just explosion of nastiness in South Florida's waters. And all the elected officials ran saying that they were going to deal with that. They were going to help to fix that. So we really uh, had great hopes going into the session. There were many, many bills introduced that would have dealt with some of those issues and certainly a lot of other environmental issues as well and basically in the end the amazing thing is is that as best we can tell and in a full assessment uh, not a single pro environment bill passed as, as, as far as the legislature now certainly there were there were monies allocated to do things to spend money on environmental improvements but as far as a bill specifically addressing something adding a new program what uh, you know regulatory program or laws whatever nothing pro environment really passed so. yes the governor uh, as you point out uh, and the legislature from south uh, southwest Florida very attuned to the issues down there the governor ran on uh, making an environment a big part of his platform he was elected he challenged the legislature to uh, put some uh, authorization and some financing behind those priorities. But as we all know, the governor's the governor, the legislature's the legislature, and reality is where they kind of meet in between. Does money actually match the promises made? So, Christian, tell us what you saw in the legislature this year. Well, I've got, yeah, I've got a few, um, a few photos, a few slides to kind of help tell that, that story. And so, um, you know, again, it was it was a very disappointing session. But when we look at at Florida and look at really our natural history, I think it's one that we all know that's very apparent about living in Florida, and it's why so many of us are here. And that is water. It's the proximity to water. We're surrounded by water, regardless of where we are. We've got the Gulf of Mexico on one side, and we've got the Atlantic on the eastern side, and we've got the Straits of Florida to the south. And and even if you're on uh, land, you're never very far from from water, whether it's um, um, you know just down the street from here in a nearby river or creek or lake or if you dig a hole in the ground it's going to fill with water within a couple of feet down probably so we are really the water state it defines our lives here and so many of us um, recreate we play we fish we do things on our water we all depend on you know clean water for for, for drinking and bathing and all of these many things and and um, you know our, our laws are a big part of helping to maintain and, and keep these waterways clean as Florida grows because not only are we obviously the water Water state, but we are really the growth state. As much as any state in America, we have a state where our economy has really been set up around um, trying to entice people to move here from elsewhere in the nation. And with that comes major environmental impacts. And there's been this this struggle between those two competing forces since, um, I guess, at least really probably the middle middle of the 20th century after the war war uh, second world war and especially once air conditioning and uh, DDT came in to tame some of the things that were here in Florida that made it uh, made it difficult a difficult place to live in earlier times and so um, but water is the thing that unites us all all together and and we had this terrible terrible tragedy that's really significant in the history 
of, of Florida. Um, the last time we had uh, this type of major environmental tragedy in Florida would have been in the 60s, early 70s, and it actually would have been here in Pensacola Bay and Escambia Bay here, where uh, in those days we were uh, um, uh, you know, we were developed earlier on than so much of the rest of the state, and we had yeah. more industry than the rest of the state. And unfortunately, the legacy of that was we had these terrible, terrible water quality issues back then that um, caused massive fish kills. But fast forward to today, in 2017, 2018, these these combined crises in the mm -hmm. same year of the blue green algae, which is largely the stuff you found in the freshwater, with nutrients coming down the um, the, the, the rivers and creeks feeding uh, Lake Okeechobee. And then that water being discharged to the coast. You know, Florida's interior has been replumbed down there in order to <laughs> to, to make those areas uh, uh, suitable for development, for agriculture, yeah. for um, for land development. And when the water levels are too high to keep the 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 cane fields and to keep developed areas around the lake from flooding, they they pump that water off to the coast, and it's carrying with it all these nutrients. Nutrients sound good, but an overabundance of nutrients is probably more than any other problem, um, uh, water quality problem, one that affects more bodies of water in America than just about anything else. Christian, the, um, the Lake Okeechobee watershed actually begins up in Orange County, I believe, up in the uh, or Osceola County in Orange County, Kissimmee, and the Orlando area. And I noticed that the, the state legislature in past years continues to put money into uh, protecting th this watershed or conserving the watershed uh, this is a, a, a basically an uninhabitable area for many places there's cattle raised in some of these areas but a lot of um, the swampy areas up there is, is this something that um, the legislature is um, continuing to press on meaning uh, put money against what this session of the legislature clearly showed is that the Republican majority, especially, which really it's their it's their legislature. They they are the ones that it's their agenda to bring forward. They have the votes, and and they did that. They've shown that they're clearly willing to spend money on some of the environmental improvements. They're not willing to create new, say, uh, regulatory programs to address some of the issues, which we think there there have to be. Um, there have to be new regulations in some cases. And we don't, you know, humans sometimes balk at regulations, but we have a system of regulations in place now to keep us from the worst things from happening. And we think there are opportunities for, you know, more of that in, in places and in dealing with this algae crisis. But they, they are spending money. The legislation session did uh, allocate monies to be spent on, there's a task force that's going to meet to deal with the, to, to look at uh, finding solutions to the, to the blue-green algae mess. They funded some money to go to Moat Marine Lab in southwest Florida right. to study red tide. Um, you know some complaints that that's a little more focused on technology and and, and whatever than maybe than, than solutions but um, anyway that has moved forward as well and there's a whole bunch of money toward kind of wetland restoration and building some of the reservoirs down around the Everglades that they want to build to capture capture some of that excess stormwater and filter it um, hundreds of millions of dollars for a lot of those Everglades restoration and the programs in, the, in that area as well that would, certainly will help with some of this, but no new controls were put in place on what are believed to be some of the contributors, the septic pollution, um, the stormwater runoff, the spreading of biosolids, which is which is the, um, the, the leftover dried product from a sewage treatment plant that gets spread on farm fields and then runs off when it when it rains, um, the septic tanks that I mentioned, all those things are combining, you know, to, to, to 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 um, to discharge nutrients into these waterways. Is this uh, a Southwest Florida problem, or could this could we up here in Northwest Florida uh, see the same kind of issues up here? We are already have some of these issues at a smaller scale. Yeah. I think that to to create anything on the scale of that would that our land uses would have to change here dramatically. More agriculture, more more development, mm -hmm. and certainly there's more development in our in our future, but they have a pretty unique circumstance down there with all that water that they discharge to the coast that's full of the all those nutrients from the from those central Florida areas. So it's a fairly unique dynamic. But nutrient issues, again, nutrients sound good, but too many nutrients creates a terrible problem in waterways. We have those issues here in Northwest Florida as well. Yeah. Um, and, and a few more of the other uh, I think we saw some of the images of some of the dead marine life. There were not only millions of, of uh, 
of fish killed in that and, and birds, but also some of the more endangered and threatened animals such as sea turtles and, uh, and manatees as well. And that's really uh, a big deal with those animals because they, there aren't a whole lot of them anyway, and when you lose a few of those, uh, in this case hundreds of them, that's a big, big hit to the population, really, uh, really a tragedy. And to a large degree, this issue did not get ad addressed by, by the legislature in terms of anything really substantive to control some of the inputs causing this. Now, red tide is naturally occurring, but it is believed that it can be made worse and has been made worse by human activities, which can make it more severe, increase the duration of the red tide event. The blue-green algae um, things that we see are completely, that's really a, a man-made thing completely, um, any, anything at that level. And the scary thing about this now is the human health impacts they're finding are absolutely incredible. Um, brain damage, um, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, liver damage from just being around and being exposed in inhalation to, to that. And that's an emerging area of science, but it looks to be um, a, a very, very dangerous type of, type of thing. So. Um, so, you know, th that was really the, the big issue going into the yeah. legislative session, I think. Um, but it points out that, that, you know, as Florida develops, we need more of these large, big, you know, natural areas that really um, are, are the heart and soul of Florida and certainly were before the state got so developed. And, and so for me, working on water quality issues and working to protect the, the health of the Gulf of Mexico, what we know is a landscape like that one that we're seeing there, by the way, that's called Pine Flatwoods. That's the yeah. number one most common landscape. It covers more Florida yes. than any yeah. other landscape, right. pi, pi, typically longleaf pine or slash pine above with salt palmetto below on our, on our ground cover there, um, extensive coverage of, of Florida. That type of land use delivers less pollution to our waterways in any other land use. That's the giant sponge. That's the giant filter. The more land we leave in that, the better off we are, the healthier we are. It's also wildlife habitat for all the critters that we like, from black bears to gopher tortoises to flatwood salamanders to rickety woodpeckers to all these all these cool things. Um, but we need more and more of that land in in those undeveloped spaces to, to help filter that rainwater and keep it clean and natural. And so, uh, unfortunately, um, yeah, the, and the places that are very special to me and for those of us you know here in the Panhandle, uh, this is actually St. Joseph Bay, so St. Joe oh. Bay over there by Port St. Joe, that high saline water, the, the beautiful grass beds, and all of that depends on the purest water coming down um, from the interior of the panhandle being delivered to those um, to those waterways in order to keep them clean and healthy. And when and when when, the, when a raindrop falls in a forest, you can guarantee that it's going to come and get completely clean and filtered versus the raindrop that comes from a parking lot, a golf course, a lawn, a developed area, or any of the water that comes through our wastewater treatment plants or septic fe you know, fields or or, or or any of that. Christian, the uh, the uh, legislature. I've noticed in the last 18 months or so, uh, there, there's money coming into Northwest Florida for waterways, restoration, and maintenance, plus the Deepwater Horizon uh, bonanza, so to speak. Some would say it's justice. Uh, the money is targeted at Triumph Gulf Coast and Nerda and others up into this area. Do you think that this, this abundance of Deepwater Horizon uh, lawsuit money may be dissuading the legislature from appropriating more money to this area. Uh, what's your take on that? That's interesting. I don't. Um, I, I, I I have heard a little bit of that. Um, I think that that may be the case in, in terms of some of the. Um, maybe more from the economic development standpoint, mm. because the Triumph money ended up being such a big pot of money, one and a half billion dollars. It really dwarfed the environmental monies that have come through NERDA. And the Restore monies, of course, are mixed environmental and yeah. economic. But um, I think from, the, from, from, from an economic development standpoint, yes, and I know there's been that, that speculation that the legislature would love to take some of that money back for use elsewhere. It hasn't happened yet. Hurricane um, Michael was one of the the uses that they uh, they decided, and I think Triumph um, compromised with them and uh, worked with the legislature. I know uh, Chairman Gates said that they were going to uh, create a fund for Triumph. But anyway, back to the environmental stuff from the legislature. Um, Northwest Florida, I think, has escaped a lot of these water management, water quality issues. You mentioned that we were industrialized earlier. Maybe Tampa Bay had some industry, but uh, so we're now in sort of the protect and clean up mode where 
I think South Florida is sort of in the discovery and what to do about it mode. That's sort of my outside looking in take. Is that right or is that wrong? Yeah, definitely different histories. So the interesting thing is they South Florida is certainly where more of the land development has been than in Northwest Florida. So we benefit from all those millions of acres of pine trees, whether they're in private lands or, or public lands. We don't have the agriculture as much that they have down there, which can be a, a source of pollution. And we haven't had the amount of develop, land development that they, that they have down there. Industry, interestingly, the industry can be easier to clean up in a lot of ways because it's one single source of pollution, right? It's one pipe, it's one facility, easy, one permit, easier to kind of manage that, handle that, get after that versus what you know millions of homes over over thousands and thousands and thousands of square miles and millions of septic tanks and all these other things that that take up uh that are spread so so far across the landscape and hard to deal with and the way like i said south florida has been replumbed and the water's yeah. going in so many different directions and, and and all of that and draining the land and we don't have anything like that up here our our waterways are largely intact they haven't been um they haven't been diked or dammed we haven't had that sort of thing happen up here the water management districts bought a lot of the land along our, our, our rivers mm -hmm. up in northwest Florida. We're fortunate to have that. And we don't have that large-scale agriculture that – I mean, we have agriculture in the sense, uh, but it's called silviculture. It's growing pine trees right. and not – and it's which is environmentally much better than, than growing the crops or, 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 the, or the cattle or any of that, where um, more land is exposed, more um, – there's more runoff and such. How did the legislature uh, approach solar energy or renewable energies this year? Yeah, so there's always you know something cooking with energy, and energy is a huge issue in Florida. Um, the one of the, I guess, the one that got the most attention that would be energy related is they were trying to ban fracking in Florida. Mm -hmm. So you know, fortunately, there's very little drilling in Florida. We we live closest to the biggest area of drilling, which is in the J, you know, fields. Yeah. So a little bit of Escambia, mostly Santa Rosa County, and maybe extending a tiny bit into Alabama. And then there's a little bit of drilling, or has been, or trying to be in Southwest Florida. Uh, down there, so there's not a lot of it, but it was a big um, it was a big push by environmental groups to ban fracking so that it never happens here. As as best I know, there has never been fracking in Florida yet. They just haven't had to use that in order to extract what they've needed. But that bill broke down. It did not it did not pass. Um, but that was one of that was the most high profile energy. Thing. There were some other bills related to climate change, related to renewable energy. You know, we know that our future is solar. We know that our future is solar energy. The utilities are starting to invest in that more and more now. The price is coming down for you know the people who do want to do it at the residential and business level as well. It's, it's absolutely our future. We don't get enough wind here in Florida to really make wind viable for the most part. So it's going to be solar. But the, the investor owned utilities have continued to succeed at at you know holding off any incentives for. Um, residential business uh, uh, customers to, to to go to solar because that's competition for for them and they don't want that to, to happen. So uh, water quality issues in Southwest and South Florida last year drove the political dialogue, put Governor DeSantis into a a, a Teddy Roosevelt conservationist is the way he mm -hmm. described himself and it became an election issue and the, the legislature took it up but it seems to me now that the legislature's over, it wasn't water quality that seemed to become the narrative. It looked to me like toll roads have become the big narrative here all of a sudden. What's that all about, Christian? Well, that's become the big, I guess, the big ugly bill that came out of the session. And, and as I said, we didn't see a single pro-environment um, bill really come out of this this session but there were a couple of negative ones and the toll road bill is really the most negative of all and so we know that in order to have these healthy waterways we have to have those big intact natural landscapes left and uh, instead this this bill was proposed by the the I guess it was the Senate president it was kind of his his right. baby I believe um, to do these massive toll roads into rural areas kind of three main sections of the of the state uh, and the interesting thing is I mean this was never part of the Florida Department of Transportation planning process I mean they are they do extensive planning they they know where the needs are and and this just came out of nowhere it's sort of like it reminds me of the Department of Defense things where the uh, you know congressmen will say well to tell the tell the Air Force or the Navy this is the jet you need yes. and they'll say well we don't want that that's not the one we need. No, you that's the one you need and you're gonna take it it's almost like that but the unfortunate thing is this would facilitate the development of land 
lands that are rural lands now that are either working farms or natural landscapes forests that we desperately need to maintain wildlife habitat quality of life um, healthy waterways in Florida this would facilitate the development of those lands create sprawl massive new development in those areas cut through wildlife corridors that um, are needed by things like black bears and Florida panthers and other endangered species it would absolutely be tragic you combine that with the fact that the legislature has really thumbed their nose at buying land as they're required to do by the Constitution and that's being litigated they've thumbed their nose at doing that and uh, we're so we're losing land and this would just cause us to lose more of that natural land yeah this looked like a tough tough one uh, it was put forward as you know by the Senate president uh, Galvano who I believe is uh, from Bradenton I believe that's where he's from anyway uh, and when the Senate president wants the governor has to kind of listen carefully because the governor's whole agenda probably going into next year will depend on support from the Senate president to get it through. I noticed that uh, the, the public announcement that the governor had signed the toll road bill didn't come from the governor's office last Friday. It came from Senator Galvano's office at a charity golf tournament down in Bradenton. Um, so that tells me that um, the politics of this I, th I think the governor probably signed it. I think one of his spokesmen over the weekend said, well, the governor believed we need new roads and the governor believes hurricane evacuation would be best supported by additional capacity in the highway system. But, um, you know, for further questions, contact Senator Galvano's office. So this whole business of the toll roads close to the Florida panhandle, one of them, the conceptual drawing, would take it from, um, and I get confused, but it would take it from Pinellas, uh, th those counties and around the Tampa Bay area up toward and through the Big Bend, specifically up into Taylor County, which in the Perry, Florida area, which I know as my last great refuge of old Florida, it's where I go to get my uh, old Florida vibe on and the, the, the scrub palmetto and the cattle and all of that. It's just to me, it's uh, the last great sanctuary in the state of Florida. So this would go up into, as we see here um, on the chart, um, this is a big project. Actually, they would propose taking it all the way up to the Georgia line where it would connect to nothing under the nothing right now. Uh, where do you see this going, Christian? I understand the legislature, that the money, they just put money for studies right now. I mean, there's no money for paving roads or clearing land. It's just to study this whole proposal. Where do you think this is going to go? Well, I mean, obviously, it's going to the study of it's going to move forward. One good thing is that um, it, it takes a long time, a long, long time to plan, design, engineer roadways, highways like this. It's not anything that can happen right away. I think the environmental organizations and probably a lot of quality of life community groups are going to continue to be engaged on this and follow it into the future. And I can only hope that Florida in the future gets back to growth management, that we get back to buying and preserving land like the citizens have voted for, that will be a check on things like this. and 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 maybe at some point the the population growth thing finally starts to slow down i mean it's been what our economy is but if we can find another way of 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 of, of keeping our economy going that just doesn't depend on growth um, we have to find a different way of doing things in florida in order to maintain the things that we love about florida and, and that we think are special about florida and and stop a, a highway like this for certain so. uh, good point bringing up growth management um one of the big surprises in this year's uh, legislative session and this relates to environment land management growth management was what's now being called the so-called brandis amendment uh, a, a member of the legislature from st petersburg introduced an amendment at the very last minute it was probably late after midnight i was watching them on the florida channel and they're like two o'clock in the morning still trying to get the budget done but he introduced an amendment that uh, some say would have a chilling effect on the ability of citizens to challenge development orders by municipalities, development orders that run counter to the municipality or the county's uh, comprehensive land plan. Uh, what can you tell us about the Brandis Amendment? I mean, this was sort of a last minute thing. I don't know how much vetting it got. Well, first of all, you're watching the legislature after uh, midnight, right. so you're more, you're even more dedicated well, than, uh, I, than I am. Political junkies, but, uh, the, uh, the last yeah. minute, all kind of weirdness happens in the legislature. So, 
um, yeah. I had to keep my eye on it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it was something that didn't get any um, reviewing in committee. It didn't get any staff analysis. Really? I mean, there's a reason yeah. these things get worked through a process where we can make sure that only the things that are that are justified and are going to be best for Florida get passed. So, unfortunately, it was a last minute amendment um, attached onto a larger bill that it, what it ends up doing is, uh, you know, most growth management in Florida has really been thrown out and, and a lot of what's been left has been pushed to the local governments. But there is still a right for a citizen to challenge. If we think a local government, your city, your county has made a bad, uh, an incorrect, an, an actually an illegal decision, right, under the code um, on, on a growth management matter, you can challenge that. You have the right to do so. And we've seen instances of that certainly here locally. Uh, and typically, you have to hire an attorney. The other yeah. side hires attorneys. You go through that process. This um, this amendment to this bill and this law now actually would make the loser. If you challenge and you lose, you would be liable for court costs, um, legal fees, right. both both potentially of the local government, their legal fees, but also perhaps the the developer or the landowner, uh, if they uh, hired attorneys to be part of this process as well, you could be you could be responsible for their fees as well. So it will absolutely have a chilling effect on on on. Uh, cases that are typically brought by either very small local community groups that have almost no money or a, right. a, an individual local citizen. These are people who don't have the resources. Local governments can almost hire lawyers and an unlimited. They have their own. They 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 farm them out. You know they 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 hire new ones. Um, it's really going to have a chilling effect on the ability of citizens. Yeah, to I, I hold think government uh, accountable. I, I think it's just uh, weird that the the law would require the plaintiff, a citizen, me, you who would challenge this in court, and then should we lose, uh, then we're liable to pay the attorney's fees, which we already pay through our taxes. I mean, the attorneys are basically county employees or city employees. So it, it's just really the high, it's really weird that this would get in there. Now, I understand they're trying to get out of town. They're trying to get the budget bill. Some guy comes in and says, I'm going to tack this on. But he, he had to do it with the approval of the speaker. So we know that this political calculus can be the sausage factory, as they like to call it. But this, and I'm not sure as we sit here today, Monday, whether uh, the governor has signed this or not. I think, uh, I, so I'm not sure. I would hope, I mean, my personal opinion, I would hope he would consider this carefully before signing. And if he has signed it, then maybe the legislature can address this or have better public hearings on this in the future. Yeah, I don't believe he signed it yet, but it, I think it automatically becomes law after a certain number of days anyway, right? Even if he hasn't signed it. I forget how many days. So, Christian, uh, we want to wrap it up. This has been a good session today. I think we understand a little bit better through your help uh, what happened over there in Tallahassee in the legislature. It's, uh, it's our government. It, these are our representatives. And uh, I would encourage all of you to uh, make your views known. Speak to them about those things. And we like here at ECW Live to help you understand this, know what's going on, so that you can make an informed decision. So on behalf of our guest today, uh, Christian Wagley, uh, Teresa Hill back uh, in the production console back there behind the lights, and uh, all of you who've joined us whenever you're watching this, we appreciate it. Thank you so much and uh, look forward to our next legislative recap on education. Take care.